Okay, the sync is going to be off a little bit here, so just um, pardon that. <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, we're recording. I think everything's pretty close. <laughs> all right, part two, C24. Uh, today we're going to figure out how to tweak all the sounds. Uh, in part one, we learned uh, sound familiar. Yeah, that's it basically. Um, we learned how to just kind of find the groove and get some loops going in the matrix there. And today we're going to isolate sounds and, um, you know, get them to sound the way we want. Now in standard audio engineering, you would actually not do it this way. You would do part three first. And part three is going to be putting this all together into a 32 bar song. So, writing a song is essentially three steps. One, find a, a groove, a hook, whatever. Um, two, structure the song. And then three, do all your effects. Okay, uh, but we're kind of turning that on its head here because this is not strictly audio, it's actually MIDI. And uh, one of the nice things about MIDI is that when you add an effect to an instrument, you're essentially <clears throat> creating a whole new instrument. So I like to get my instruments down. We're going to isolate this bass here and uh, basically play with that. I like to put it in with just a couple drum tracks just to, I don't know. All right, find the bass. There it is. Okay, bass three analog. And what are we going to do? There are system effects. We're actually sending to the system effect already, but we're going to add an insertion effect. A system effect effect can be used on everything, and an insertion effect is used. You know, you insert it into a track or an instrument, or um, you can even insert it into a system effect. But anyway, um, I've chosen chorus for now. I don't know if you can hear that. It. There's a wah. There's distortion. And we can play, of course, with each one of these effects. I kind of like distortion, so. Let's see how that sounds. Play with the drive and the level. And. Yeah, we'll go with that. Probably have to play with that level a little bit. Yep, there we go. Play with the level, bring it down a little bit, just so it doesn't stand out too much. Yeah, not like any bass I've ever played. <laughs> but for all intents and purposes, it's going to be the bass track of the uh, the verse section of our 32-bar song. Kind of liking that. Okay. As you can see I'm gonna have to edit this video to make it shorter. I actually tried to keep this as short as possible for you, but whatever. All right, so now um, that's I like to hear it kind of in the context of the whole, you know, all the other song uh, loops and instruments. So I'll turn on a few more instruments here and um, kind of see how that sounds. By the way, this isn't the way the song's gonna sound at the end of the day, but. Let's do another instrument here. What should we isolate? Let's do a drum. Hmm. Which drum? Nice thing about doing song, uh, songs this way is that you can really um, isolate any sound and do whatever you want with it. So if you want your snare to sound a certain way, you can add effects there. If you want your crash to sound a certain way, you can isolate that. If you want your you know, whatever, your 
guitar to sound a certain way. I've already done the guitar effects, as you can hear. Um, let's do the clap. Alright, so we're going to go to Hydrogen, our drum machine, and open up the mixer. And the clap will be the one that's, well, it says hand clap. And we have two effects um, active here. Over on the right, you'll see if you're in high def, you'll see tap, chorus, flange, um, and the Dyson compressor. And we can apply either of those effects in various levels. Um, and we can adjust those effects too, although I didn't do that in this video. I'm dubbing my voice, just so you know. That's why the sync is messed up. My computer is too stupid to do uh, sound card sound and MIDI sound and video all at the same time. But yeah, I like that. So we compressed that a little bit and added just a, just a hair of a flange chorus thing to it. But that sounded good. We might have to adjust the level. Usually do. First, let's turn some stuff on and see if it stands out. Yeah, it does kind of stand out. So, I think in a second here, if I remember right, I'm actually going to adjust the level down with the fader and the mixer. Someone's calling me, of course. God dang it. Call me back. It's going to be a really great song, by the way. You're not going to want to miss part three. Part three, I'm going to show you how to put it all together in the, uh, the song editor. It'll be a 32-bar song. You will be amazed. This person is calling me back again. Oh, I hate it when people do that. Don't call me right now. I'm freaking busy. Turn off my ringer here. This is a nice way to do a song, by the way, because um, really smooth transitions between our, you know, parts of our song, our intro, our verse, our chorus, our bridge, etc. All right, let's do another instrument here. What are we doing? Um, guitar? Nah, I already have that one the way I want it. Chuck, hurry up. I'm wasting time here. Nobody wants to watch this. You might want to listen. I don't know. I'm kind of digging it. <laughs> I didn't. Even, I wasn't even really listening to the beat when I was doing this. I was listening to each sound individually. Okay, so now we're panning our wah bass, which is that big fat wow thing you hear. So that's basically how you do it, you know, you um, isolate the, the uh, sound that you want and you tweak it, you add effects and you play with the pan and you play with the level and you play with the system effects and you play with the depth and you play with the drive and you know whatever you got to work with you just kind of mess around with it. And uh, a lot of audio engineers will tell you that the effects should come last and technically that's if I were working with regular audio instruments, you know, like a guitar or a piano or a bass, I would definitely do the effects last because um, that, uh, what was I going to say? Duh. <laughs> um, you don't want to corrupt a pure sound from an instrument, but with MIDI, there are no pure sounds. In fact, there are actually no sounds. It's all digital. It's all coming from the computer. So you can't, there's nothing to corrupt. So, you know, go crazy with the effects, invent new sounds, you know, and why not? As long as it doesn't sound crummy, then hey, whatever. You're not going to sound like every other DJ out there, but who cares? Every, I mean, 